There are two types of people who will tell you that you cannot make a difference in this world. Those who are afraid to try and those who are afraid you will succeed. That is a quote by Ray Goforth. Welcome to Trina Talk. Trina Talk is a weekly podcast that will inspire and empower women of all ages to strive for the impossible. Your host, Trina L. Martin from TrinaMartin.com is a motivational speaker, leader, and cyber tech expert. Every week, Trina will share wisdom gained from her life experiences and lessons learned while pursuing her goals to inspire you to achieve the next level in your life. Now, your host, Trina L. Martin. Hello, welcome to Trina Talk. I am your host, Trina L. Martin, and this is episode 35. The topic of this week's episode is what is your marketing strategy? We're taking a little different approach this week. We're diving into the business realm. My guest this week is David Summerflett. David is a digital marketing specialist with over 20 years experience in helping business owners go from failure to ruin to reinventing profits. He's spoken at Microsoft, written for AOL Time Warner, advised hundreds of businesses across America, and worked for startups. Hi, David. Welcome to Trina Talk. Hi, Trina. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for being on the show. I have been reading your um, bio, and we've been talking and connecting, but you are a digital marketing strategist or specialist. And here at Trina Talk, we empower women, but we do have men listeners. Yes. And like me, I know there's a lot of other women out there who are business women or looking to start their own business. And just tell us about who you are and your expertise as far as the marketing side of the house. Sure. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Um, Basically, I have about 30 years experience um, working for different marketing agencies and advertising firms. Now, during those different positions, um, you know, I had the infrastructure and support of the marketing agency or advertising firm that I worked within. And obviously, you know, during that 30 year period of time, you know, I gradually grew to taking on different positions and different levels of management and um, being a team leader for some groups and so on, different uh, positions. And in the last couple of years, I'm kind of retired and uh, became a solo uh, consultant, uh, starting my own consultancy, basically, which is DMS.blue, which is my initials, uh, plus what I do. And then my favorite color. And so how do I help business owners? I, I basically work with maybe one or two business owners per quarter um, because now I don't really do it for the money so much as wanting to really get my hands into the nuts and bolts of business and really trying to transform one business at a time. So if I don't feel like I can really knock it out of the park for that business owner, I'm just not going to take it. And I'll just, I'll tell them that if I can't guarantee you results, I don't want to take it. Um, And now, and in that manner, it keeps it um, challenging, but also really, really rewarding for me and the people that I talk to. Okay. So in your, and I'm glad you told me what the blue was, because that was going to be one of my questions. Why is everything blue? So favorite color. (laughs) Got it. <laughs> I, you know, I've never really been good with feng shui and interior design and, and dressing and everything. And uh, my wife just kind of told me one day, she's like, look, why don't you just pick a color and just coordinate? And I said, you know what? That's genius. My favorite <laughs> color is blue. I'm just going to wear blue. Everything, And if it's not blue, I'm going to throw it away. And in that way, everything's coordinated. Everything looks, looks nice. And you stand out. And it also brands me because obviously I'm a marketing guy and it's uh, a good way to establish a visual brand. What color should my logo be? Blue. You know, and I tell people, well, I'm the tall, skinny, ball-headed guy. 
who wears blue. I got blue glasses. I got blue suits. And, and that's what I wear everywhere. So I stand out. I'm easy to remember. And, you know, uh, it, it just keeps things much, much easier that way. So you do wear blue all the time. Oh, yeah. I love oh. it. I'm, I got my blue co- my blue water bottle right here in front of me. Got my, uh, bl- my blue webcam that you can't see. My blue phone right here. My blue glasses on. Wow. Talk I, about marketing and branding, huh? I'd dye my beard blue if it didn't, you know, if I didn't get more chuckles with it. <laughs> okay. So in your, in your ex- expertise, yes. doing your digital marketing, what are you seeing as far as maybe some mistakes that the small business owner or someone who is trying to mm-hmm start their business, what are you seeing the mistakes that they may be making and how they can improve? Well, it's a really, really important question. And one of the things that I forgot to mention that was really pivotal for me in my experience was I was a um, volunteer, a certified business mentor for approximately 10 years for an organization called SCORE, which is a nonprofit organization that works within the United States Small Business Administration. There's one in every city within the U.S. And I was a volunteer for them for about 10 years off and on. And I'd take a break for a while whenever, you know, I felt like I needed one. And after about 10 years, I got to the point where I was getting so many phone calls and so many emails that I was literally like a full-time job. And I didn't have the heart to turn some people down. And it just got to be overwhelming. And I just said, enough. I I just can't do this anymore. I stopped, took a break for about a year, year and a half. My wife got cancer. I took a break during that time as well. I mean, if that's not a message, I don't know what is. And it, it basically caused me to really take a step back and reassess what I was doing and why I was doing it. Because it wasn't for the money. What was I getting from it? And you know, I, I learned so much during that time because, I mean, I was with all these agencies for 30 odd years in marketing and advertising and then on my own and then volunteering. And the statistics haven't changed. The majority of businesses within the United States are small businesses. And that means that they employ 50 or fewer employees. That's a small business. If you make $5 million per year or less, you're considered a small business by the United States Small Business Administration. And they have a great website, by the way, um, where you can go and get all kinds of research and different uh, templates and so on for research. And, um, you know, what I learned is that the overwhelming statistical majority of small businesses go under within their first 16 months. And that's not my opinion. That's just statistical fact. And that's regardless of whether you get involved with them and try to help them or not. Now, the reasons for that vary from person to person and from industry and demographics and other, you know, other elements. So the odds are stacked against the small business owner. And, and again, I can get into the nuts and bolts of this more if you'd like. So that hasn't changed. It's extremely challenging to be a small business owner in America uh, today. And the economy, inflation, stagnant uh, wages, the rising cost of health care, all of these are making it even more of a pressure cooker. So it's really important that business owners and startups and entrepreneurs, that they really do their due diligence, really do research and get the help that's out there um, to really ensure that they're successful. And, you know, the definition of success can vary from person to person. But to me, the definition of success is your bottom line. Can you support your family? Can you pay your rent or your mortgage? That's the bottom line. And in the past, when I was in between agencies, and I'd say, okay, look, I've got to get enough contracts to take care of my wife and pay the rent. That's as real as it gets. You know, I'm not eating spam and ramen noodles, okay? I'm sure as hell not doing it now. Can I cuss on your podcast? Yes. Okay, excuse me. Uh, So 
that's just not an option. You know, being homeless, not having, you know, decent food to eat, that is not and never was an option. I'll do whatever it takes. That would, it's not going to happen. And so during those, there were years in the past, you know, where I'd be in between agencies and I'm like, I'm going to make it on my own before I, you know, in between these different agencies or what have you, I would have enough contracts to do it. But there were times when it was very, very tight. And I learned a lot from that. And, you know, basically for the business owner, you've got to have your different elements organized. You've got to work from a marketing plan. You've got to know what, what matters most to you, what you can or can't do, and what your objectives are. So many small business owners don't have objectives or goals. And if you ask them, they're not fully formed. So there's a lot of different things to touch on there. So I would like to get your opinion on this. So you said to do your research and take, um, use all the resources that are available to you. Yeah. Now, I know you, I'm familiar with SCORE and the Small Business Administration, and there's other places and things you can go now. In your expertise, mm-hmm. would someone try to do all of these? Because if you're starting up, you really don't have a lot of money. Would you suggest they do right. all of these little free things? Or would you suggest that they say, okay, I have some money. I'm going to invest in a coach or someone who can help get me there without me spending yeah. extra effort? That's a really important question. Um, there's an old saying called, every, uh, I'm sure you might have heard it. The saying goes, every dog has fleas. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they do, <laughs> they do. Um, I'm not going to, I don't want to cast aspersions toward any organization or group, but every group and organization has their own uh, objectives. And let's get real. A business's focus is on what? To make money. Right. So if you're not making money, you're moving backward. You can't support your family. These are established business entities that are focused in on making money. They've got to make their money some way in some form. So in a lot of cases, these entities are really oriented or can be oriented. Let me put it that way, because not everybody is. It depends on who you talk to and where and and their experience and so on. But they can, it can be focused in on trying to align you with getting a loan. Some loans have high interest rates, some don't. I can tell you from my own experience how I did it. I saved money like a dirty dog. And that enabled me to get the ball rolling exponentially. If you're saving money one month, roll it into the next month until you can start to save more and more and more. You'd be surprised how much you can really save by not eating out or not getting coffee from Starbucks uh, you know, every day and just committing to that for 90 days. You'd be amazed how much you can save. Just going to work and going home and studying or taking an online course, it's free, you know, and just committing to that for 90 days. So my wife and I both worked full time. We saved money like crazy for a long time. And then I went to a local credit union. And in many cases, a credit union will give you a loan that's much more appealing than a small business administration uh, division or a local score chapter or some other organization. And I can't say this is true in every single case because I don't know. I'm just saying in some cases, this is what worked for me. I went to a local credit union. We had an account set up already for six months. I went in there and just said, hey, I'd like to take out a loan to start a small uh, digital marketing agency with my wife. I don't need a mountain of money because I already have a group of 10 or more contracts that are going to generate the revenue that I know I need to build a foundation upon. Is it going to be enough to go buy a house? No, but it is going to be enough to smooth the transition. And so that's how I was able to slowly build. And so for the small business owner or entrepreneur out there, one of the biggest things I see is, and I see this on a daily basis, 
Um, I talked to a lawyer a couple weeks ago who uh, was telling me, look, uh, you know, this was a lawyer who had a, I don't want to say what kind of legal practice it was, but basically he's telling me, um, um, you know, like a month away from going and getting a job at Starbucks, I, I just can't afford to have an office space anymore. I'm not getting any phone calls. I don't know what to do. And and I said, okay, well, let me take a look at your website because obviously that should be generating phone calls for you on a daily basis because people in every city need lawyers, right? I mean, come on. You could create, there's so many things you could do to generate interest. Everybody needs a lawyer in every city and every state. Mm-hmm. What I see, what I saw was he went and got himself a free DIY website. There was almost no content in it, no photos. Those that were there were very low resolution. You, if you went to Google and you typed in his type of lawyer in his city and state, he did not come up at number one or number two. So he was suffering from, you know, basically not investing the right way. So he couldn't grow his practice. So I just basically explained this in very non-technical terms and just said, look, you're not getting any leads because you're not number one in Google. You're not number one in Google because you're using a free DIY template generator thing. Can you break away from that? Yes or no. If you can invest what one client would pay you for two sessions or something, I can reverse this for you and I can guarantee it will happen. But I'm not going to do it for free. I refuse because I think it debases what I do and you won't take it seriously and you won't value it. So that was, that was something I see this playing out over and over again on a daily basis with most small business owners where you just have to cut bait and just move on and just look, I I can't help you if you're not willing to make that change. And I think in a lot of cases there's emotional attachment to it, or um, there's a lot of technical terminology when it comes to marketing. It does require a higher level of organization and patience. You know, there are a lot of people out there who think that if they go get any website or anybody makes it, they're going to be number one in Google immediately and just be deluged with phone calls. And it doesn't work like that. It just doesn't. And I wish, you know, in an ideal world, that would be the case. But, you know, look, there's a reason why every city has digital marketing agencies that, you know, won't even talk to you unless you spend five or 10 grand to just Mm -hmm. get started. There's a reason for that because they value the outcomes that they provide to businesses and the businesses that are serious and committed are willing to spend three or five grand in order to make back 30 and 50 grand six months later later. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of cases, as it relates to marketing and business growth, you kind of have to take almost um, biblical insight almost. You have to kind of see it by faith and walk toward that and work with experienced professionals who know what they're doing and let them try to guide you. You know, it's like I had to have surgery recently and I was terrified because you look up surgeons who have really bad reviews and you're like, God, please find me a surgeon who's got no negative reviews and, you know, knows what they're doing. I'm terrified. You want to work with people who know what they're doing and are experienced and can guide you. Um, And it's a mistake I see people making on a daily basis. It breaks my heart every time I see it, but you just have to keep going. And so that's a real common mistake I see people doing, jumping in before they're ready. Um, or saying everything has to be free or everything has to be super duper cheap. If you don't have money, you can save. There is nobody out there in the world who would shun a well-intentioned person who is, you know, receptive to um, um, a payment plan. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's nobody, if they came to me and said, look, I have a church that I want to get more uh, parishioners for. I want to increase our online visibility and get more people coming to our church. Oh my God. Who wouldn't love to, to take that on as a marketer? But if they say, well, look, everything's got to be free uh, as a volunteer, you know, um, it just doesn't, it won't work. 
It just, no, it won't yeah. work. There was a lady who had a nonprofit recently and, oh, it was heartbreaking. She had a nonprofit organization for single mothers, helping single mothers with um, parentless little daughters. Now, how could I couldn't even look at the photos? I couldn't even look at the photos. You know, I had to turn away. So I sent her an email. I said, Look, I, I can help you. I can make you number one in Google for your city and your state for nonprofit to help single mothers. But you've got to let me do it. You've got to let me build the site. And use photos that are appropriately sized and, you know, have good resolution. And let me make the logo according to scientific, you know, researched ways. <laughs> and she just, you know, no, I want to do it my way. And, and and I have to write the content. And she wouldn't do it. And I just wrote her back one day, just said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I just don't have the time for this. You know, I could get this done in a week for you. And, and, and keep it maintained for you indefinitely, but this isn't working. You mm -hmm. know, it's just, you, you've got to help those who want to help. You know, and I'm, and I'm glad you're saying this because, and I'm, I'm from what you're saying and what I'm hearing is you have to invest money to make money. Yeah, you do. And that's kind of what I've had to tell other people because as I'm building my business, mm -hmm. I have invested money in coaches and, you know, I just got off the phone earlier today with Infusionsoft trying to get everything automated on my website and things I'm I want to do. Very familiar with them. Very because, familiar with them. They're a great company. Yeah, because for one, I don't have the time. I'm technical. I have a technical background, but do I have the time to sit around and connect all the dots with Infusionsoft? No, I don't. Can I do it? Yes, I don't have the time. But I would rather go out there, like you said, spend three thousand dollars, let them set it up, and then okay, if it's if I have to do some tweaking here or there, maybe six months from now or a year from now, that's fine. But some people are of the the mindset of, oh well, you can just watch that on YouTube. And yeah. I have finally had to get and I had to tell somebody, I said, you know, my I, I I'm running and I want to establish a real business. I'm not trying to watch YouTube. Yeah, you may find some stuff on YouTube, but between, okay, let me watch YouTube. Let me listen to this person. Let me listen to, you have spent so much wasted time mm -hmm. instead of saying, okay, let me invest in a coach. Let me invest in software that's going to automate and do all this stuff for me. Yeah. And some people just don't get it. And, and you know, and I understand, it's, you know, it's about value. Right. It's really about valuing the outcome. If you don't have a profound need and you don't value the fulfillment of that need, then you're not willing to spend $3,000, even if you know intellectually or you understand that it can make you back $30,000. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a TV show that, that I, I love um, called The Prophet. Oh, I love that show. I love it. Yeah. And I wish I could go back and watch all seasons in a marathon because it's a very educational show. You watch Shark Tank and it looks like everything is a, a miraculous. You know, we love right. you. Here's five million. It doesn't work that way at all. Uh, they're going to, you know, and, and basically there was an episode of that show and you see it over and over again where there's pushback. They're failing and mm -hmm. they're failing because of the drama. Mm -hmm. They're trying to do everything themselves and they can't. And there was one where he even said that it was a lighting company in the episode and their website wasn't very good. It wasn't converting leads and it wasn't generating customers. And they went to a community college where the, the students studied uh, digital marketing and they found all these issues with the website. And Marcus, the, the millionaire investor said, look, I have no problem at all spending three thousand to make thirty thousand or five thousand to make fifty thousand as long as I know that they're going to work according to this structure. So I tell everybody I work with, look, if you want to hold me accountable by all means, do it. That's music to my my ears. It's when you don't have goals or you can't explain them to me that I don't want to talk to you. And I just say, look, this is a train wreck coming. And it, it's just like dating. You know, what does the other person want? If they say, well, I just want to have a good time. Look, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I met my wife, I had gone, I'd been going to clubs and I met my wife and she just like, look, this, you have to be committed 
to an adult relationship, you can't be doing this and that and the other thing, and you're not accountable to anybody. That's not going to fly with me. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I'd ever heard that. And I just said, whoa, you know, let, let me take a step back here and, and, and pause, you know. And um, I respected her more after that. And so by the same token, you get out what you put in in business as well as in relationships. And, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've had to have surgery. I had to have a root canal. And, um, you know, it's, I remember going to uh, the dentist and asking him, you know, I said, you know, I've seen these things where people go and they get uh, uh, root canals from some guy in, the, in his uh, garage. Have you ever heard of that? He said, oh, yeah. He said, yeah, actually, I've had people come in with paper clips and things like that and use super glue to put in you know, their crowns or whatever. He said, I've seen it all. And he said it usually leads to uh, infection and abscessed teeth, and they have to spend much, much more to have it corrected. You know, um, I had a friend I remember who bought a motorcycle online for fifty bucks, and I, I I took him to go get it. This is a true story. I couldn't believe it. He was a big guy, but he was dumb. He was a really nice, very, very nice guy. One of the sweetest men you could ever know, and he was like two hundred eighty-five pounds of just pure muscle. And God bless him, he was just as dumb as a post. And he went and bought this motorcycle. He took it around the block. He was so excited. I think it was one of those kit motorcycle things. And like a week or two later, he called me up and said, man, I want to kill that no good so-and-so and everything. And I said, look, what did you expect? You bought it from him for $50. You really think he's going to return your phone call now that he's got the money? You know, come on. <laughs> you get out what you put in. There's nobody out there who can't save a couple grand. I'm sorry. You go, you get a part-time job. You stop eating out. You, you do what must be done. You mm-hmm. go use the computer in the library. Don't eat out. Don't go see movies. You know, watch everything online for 90 days. If I can do it, you can do it. Believe me, my heart goes out to people who are in dire straits or having financial difficulties. Let me speak directly to you. I have been there. I have been there and I've done it. I've been through it. And if, and if I can survive it and make it through, you can too. Don't think that you can start a business and be successful with nothing. Okay. You can have faith, but even with faith, you need food to survive and you need money to start a business. And it's that simple. You don't need a fortune, but you do need a few grand and Most people who are serious and experienced and professional will work with you and just say, look, let me show you my experience and my credentials so you can see everything. Tell me all about this. Let's have some deep, you know, meaningful conversations. And if you're a good fit, they'll work with you. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, that's as as, as truthful as as it can get. I mean, I I love it because... Like I said, so many people out there, they want to start the business, but they don't want to invest anything. They think, oh, I can do everything free. And it's a hobby. Yeah. That's that's all it is. It's a hobby. And and that's okay. You know, know the difference. Know the difference and acknowledge the difference. You know, again, just like the whole dating scenario, I mean, that, that whole situation. If someone is straight up and honest with you, hey, look, I'm not looking for, you know, a serious relationship. I just want someone to casually date and have a good time with. Okay, well, at least they're being honest with you. Don't look for something that you can't get. Mm -hmm. Don't look for answers where there's no answers to be found. So if that's what the person is telling you, you got to decide. Does that meet your criteria? Is that good enough for you? But, you know, with the business owner, if it's a hobby and you're just doing it for pardon the term shits and giggles and that's all you care about, then go to it. Take photos of your squirrel water skiing or, or post, you know, photos of yourself posing for the camera, what have you. But if you're not willing to invest to be number one in Google and have a professional, sleek online presence and have decent content that engages your visitors and do the utmost that you can, it's a hobby. If you're not willing to do that, it's a hobby. It's one or the other. Either you get, you're dedicated or you're not. You're in it or you're not. You know, you can't be in something halfway. You can't be halfway committed. 
So what would be the steps that you would advise someone who is just trying to start a business or someone who's in or let's say in that process, but saying, you know what, I don't think I'm doing it right. And I want this to be a business, not a hobby. What are the steps that you would advise that they take? Well, the steps that I would advise they take is to first and foremost, get real. I mean, really get a grip on looking at yourself in the mirror and just saying, how much does this really matter to me? Because the difference is profound is, you know, when that shoe drops on the floor, when that bill comes that you can't pay, that's when the doo-doo hits the fan. When you, you are just out of excuses, you're just, you're about, you're about to declare bankruptcy. You got to be able to look at yourself and just say, is this really something that I want? Can I see myself doing this on a regularly recurring daily basis? Or am I doing it because I think I'm supposed to, or I think I should, or I just can't get a job? It has to be something that you really can and want to do on a regularly recurring basis. If it's not, then it's not for you. You just need a decent job that you can go to. Some people are more comfortable going to work a nine to five or whatever the crazy schedule is that they give you outside of that and just doing what you're told at work and putting up with the drama or the conditions and just doing it and hoping for the best. Um, A lot of people prefer that and I get it, but you've got to make that determination. And, you know, once you make that determination that this is real to you, that this is where, you know, the, the rubber meets the road, then you have to make that determination to say, what do I need to do to reach this objective? What matters to me? What's the ultimate goal I want to achieve? Is it to be able to support my family and be self-reliant? Um, that's, you know, for, for some people, that's a, a big goal. Most people would tell you, I want to be a millionaire. I want to have my own private jet, my own speedboat and everything, which is crazy. It's pie in the sky. It's what they call blue sky thinking. You can Google the term blue sky. It just means you're living in fantasy land. Nothing works that way. If your goal is to be able to pay the rent or pay the lease and take care of your family, that's realistic for a lot of people. Okay, how do we get you there now? You know, how do we get you there and then set it up so that it can maintain? Uh, and keep going. So the biggest thing is organization. And that means having a structured, deliberate, um, organized marketing plan that works on different tiers, or what they call strategies. So there's a really, really big difference in marketing between these two terms. Strategy is not marketing. They are not the same thing, okay? So it's like the difference between a human body and an arm. So marketing is, digital marketing is marketing, getting the word out and building your business using digital tools. That's what it is. Everything at your disposal that is digital, your website, SEO, social media, everything fits into digital marketing, okay? A marketing plan is basically saying, I want to get from point A to point B. How am I going to do that? What I usually suggest with clients and where I I, actually, I require this before I can work with a client is is we have to put together a comprehensive marketing plan. And obviously with me, digital is a big part of that. So the marketing plan is like a military plan. If anybody listening has ever been in the military, you have a military plan plan with structured levels to it. And each level or tier is basically like a strategy or a, a level of execution. So in military terms, you would, you know, you have the, the air, the ground, the psyops, you know, and, and different approaches that their mission is to go in and, you know, overtake a country or, or rescue a country or go save some group or what have you. And so they're, they're not just going to say, let's go roll in there and go do it. And we're just going to crush them with our superior numbers. You don't do it like that because too many people are going to, are going to suffer. 
You know, we have to have an organized, structured plan on how we're going to do this step by step in order to achieve these strategic object objectives. You know, first we'll go take over the state-run media, then we'll you know, take out their electrical grid, then we'll do this and so on to assure that they they win. In, in business marketing, it's the same thing. You don't just throw money in the wind or just, well, we're just going to go start and hope for the best or I know I'm going to do it. You don't jump in. You say, here's our organized plan that has different strategies that are organized to make sure we achieve our objective. So the end goal could be, I want to be able to be self-reliant. I'm going to be able to uh, buy my family's groceries instead of relying on them to buy my groceries. That's a very noble cause. I'm going to pay the rent. I'm going to pay the lease and take care of my wife and kids. That's real. And if that's your goal, that's a good goal. And you can empower someone to do that. Whereas if they tell you my goal is to be rich, it's so vague and pie in the sky that you have to bring them down to earth. You know? Okay. And there are some people who are really brutal, like, um, you know, where you have to break them down in order to help them, you know, and remind them of, you know, okay, how close are we to closing the doors? You know, how much debt do we have? Mm -hmm. so, you know, so we've tried it your way. We've tried, tried it, you know, on a wing and a prayer and it hasn't worked. You know, wh how, what else do we have to do before you're willing to try someone else's approach that we know is going to work. So okay. it depends on the person and the level of pushback. Um, but I always tell people, organize what you're doing. I never leave the house without a list. I can't do it. <laughs> I really, I'm just like that. You know, I'm, I'm a scattered person. If I go to the grocery store and I don't have a grocery list, I, you know what I'm going to get. I'm gonna pizza, pasta, you know, hot dogs, junk food. You know, if I get on the internet, I'm going to engage in discussions on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, and I won't get work done. So I have to have a list. So, and that may not be true for everybody, but when it comes to business and achieving objectives and reaching goals, it's everybody I've ever met. And in order for us to work along certain uh, structure in certain ways and use all these different tools, I always require that I sit down with them and say, either you have a marketing plan and we'll go through it together, or if you don't, here's how I want you to begin working on one. And once that's done, then we begin work. And I, I work very quickly. Um, I grew up around military families. My father was in the Navy for like 35 years. So I always grew up around military people and living on bases and I'd go to the commissary and everything. And I used to ride my bike to the base. And I remember I used to drive my car up to the missile silos and they'd salute to me. And I used to crack it, crack up in the car, <laughs> but I learned a lot from being around them. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything without some structure and order and everything has to be disciplined and done for a reason, on a budget, in a deliberate manner. Um, so that's how I work. No project should ever take more than 60 days. I mean, honestly, it shouldn't take more than 30 days. So if it's a really, really big project like eBay or something, then maybe see maybe 60 days. Um, you know, and in which case you'd assemble a team. But um, for most business owners, you should be able to do what needs to be done within 30 days mm -hmm. you know, or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's um, you have really put out some very valuable information because I think a lot of entrepreneurs needed to hear this because I know when you don't have money, but my thing is you have to invest in something you, and you may not you may not have all the money you want to have, or you may not be sitting on a stack of money to say, okay, poof, here's, you know, $50,000. I'm just going to start this business, but you can do things in pieces as you have. Them. Like you say, you can save and say, okay, here's $3,000. I'm going to put this towards my marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe next month I have three more thousand or a thousand. And what can I do for this? Maybe I can go to a class for the, so you have to invest. And yeah. I'm so glad that you said that because, you know, I have some friends that say, 
oh, you spent money doing that? You spent that? You could you could have done that yourself. And I'm I'm mm-hmm. going, well, I don't have time to do that. And yes, I'm trying to have and it a doesn't business. always work. So David, now we're in the section where we go on to the 10 questions that I asked of all my guests. So are you ready? I sure am. Okay. Who or what motivates you? Um, you know, as corny as it sounds, my wife motivates me. Um, you know, it really, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't wake up every morning smiling. Um, and I know it sounds really cornball, but that's really true. Okay. What demotivates you? People who don't care. They, they make me actually feel really sad and depressed. And that's the truth. Uh, and I even heard some sound effect go like that in the background. That was my dog. Um, that was your, yeah, he must have heard me. But, <laughs> okay. When was a time that something was said or done to hurt you, but it worked out for your good? <laughs> what I just said, basically, <laughs> all of those things, all of those stories, I look back on them now. And I mean, you know, I laugh at some of them, others I don't. But it all worked out for the better because I learned from all of those uh, experiences, you know, um, you know, exactly dog in the background, (laughs) exactly. you know, I learned and, you know, it's like the, the whole dating thing, you know, when you stop and pause and you say, what really matters to me? What am I really trying to do? Why am I in this? Then you can get clear on it. And so those experiences that didn't go as I had hoped um, were really very educational for me. Okay. Is there a time when you wish you had done something that you didn't? Oh, sure. I mean, uh, all of the, 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 not all of them, but a lot of cases in the past where I would overextend, I would overextend myself, um, you know, where the cause just touches your heart. Okay. So here's another one. We'll see. um, And you can dive into, you know, your personal, whatever you want to share, your personal experiences in life or whatever. But Mm -hmm. this is kind of this is kind of the opposite. Is there a time when you wish you had not done something? Um, I mean, you know, if I look back on things now, I really, you know, I really can't say that I don't think it's really good or healthy for people necessarily to look back. Um, you know, there's an old classic book I remember hearing about called Look Back in Anger. I just don't think it's really good to look back and regret, um, you know, mistakes. I think it's better and more healthy to look back on the past and say, look what I've learned. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, if I, if I went back in time and I was a smarter guy and I could put my brain now into the body of a 20 year old, um, you know, yeah, I probably would have done a, a lot of different things differently. Um, but I, I don't know if it would have worked out the same way. Okay. What is your definition of success? My definition of success is doing what you want with who you want where you want to do it and not having to worry about money. Hmm. Okay. Um, how do you recharge? How do I recharge a good night's sleep really, really makes a big difference. Um, I will basically, um, you know, to use more of a biblical analogy, I will submit to my wife and just say, what would you like to do today? Hmm. I'm not getting in front of the computer. What would you like to do today? And she'll usually say, well, I'd like to go to the beach or I want to go be in nature somewhere. And and I would just plug in and just say, you know what? I'm going to listen to you for this day. I want you to talk about your feelings and tell me everything that's going on in your head all day long. That's it. That's one way of doing it. Another thing is I will submit. I shouldn't say submit. But I'll sit down with my our, our little pet bunny rabbit, Sean T. Bunny. And uh, everybody should have a pet. They're great for your, your pulse and your cholesterol. And I'll sit with her and just rub her head for two hours. And I might listen to a podcast 
or I'll just sit in silence for an hour or two and just rub her head and massage her and I'll keep a notebook next to me. Okay. How do you, um, what are you awesome at? Um, I've learned over time to be confident in the, in the things that other people tell me I'm really good at. So other people have told me, oh my God, look what you did. You, you know, you've done this. You know, we went from about to declare bankruptcy or shutting our doors. Now we're reinvesting profits. That's unbelievable. You changed our lives for the better. That would in turn make me feel unbelievably good. Okay. What legacy do you want to leave? I want to be able to be a good husband. And, um, you know, when I go before the, the, the maker or, you know, whoever you believe it is, you know, I want the, the creator to look at me and say, look, you did the best you could with what you've been given where you were and you did all right. You know, you tried to help as many people as you could and you did. And, um, you know, you deserve a good spot up here. That's what I'd like to hear. And I expect it. Okay. So David, give us one quick motivational takeaway that you would like to leave the listeners with. Um, there's a quote and you could probably tell I'm fond of it. In fact, I'll give you two quotes if you don't mind. I think it was Roosevelt who said, Teddy Roosevelt, I think he was the one who said, do what you can with what you have where you are. And it's a really good quote for people who are down in the dumps or lack motivation. Um, you know, and the other quote that I like is from another uh, hero of mine, uh, the great uh, writer Voltaire, who said that, I think, it, yeah, pretty sure it's Voltaire. So it's a funny thing about life that if you accept only the very best, more often than not, you will get it. Hmm. Now, yeah, that's that's a great takeaway. So. We're at the end of the podcast. So, David, go ahead and tell the listeners how they can connect with you, your website, and if they need a marketing specialist, how they can um, find you. Sure. Uh, Basically, go to that address bar and whatever web browser you use and just type in dms.blue. And you will come to my website and you'll see my phone number, my email address, and plenty of contact forms. And there's Lots of free downloads there and lots of blog posts to provide information and I'm adding to it very, very regularly. So dms.blue and you can also call my answering line at 424-DAVID-01. Okay, well, great. Well, David, I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us here. Trina, talk and give us a little of your expertise as far as digital marketing. Um, I'm pretty sure the listeners learned a lot and um, we'll be in touch. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to go out to Apple Podcasts to rate and review Trina Talk. Also, please join me every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time as I go live on Facebook and share tips to help you achieve the next level in your life. If you're looking for a speaker for your live event or conference, Go to my website and read my bio and contact me at bit.ly forward slash book Trina. I hope you have a great week. Until then, remember, if you change your mindset, you'll change your life. Keep striving. Success is a journey, not a destination. You can listen to Trina talk anytime and anywhere. It's available on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Spotify, and all other places that you can listen to podcasts. If you like the podcast, please don't forget to go to iTunes to subscribe, rate, review, and share. If you have questions for me or need inspiration on how to go to the next level, tweet me directly at Trina L. Martin.